Uh, which also happens to be the 1st of May. So I would like to begin by congratulating all of you, colleagues, comrades, uh, for the International Day of Workers. May uh, your wages be higher and your working day curtailed. <laughs> also, uh, welcome to the last day of uh, May Day School 2013 and its penultimate event. Uh, today you are all attending a uh, round table uh, dedicated, dedicated to the building of a new left in the Balkans. Uh, with us today are, uh, if we go from uh, left uh, to right, we have Boris Kanzleiter from uh, uh, the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung uh, of Southeast Europe. Uh, then we have Andrea Millet, uh, uh, affiliated with the Subversive Festival and also the media cooperative Top Media. Uh, Andrea, also thank you for jumping in last moment as a replacement. Appreciate it. Uh, Mark Postanic uh, of the Center for Labor Studies, both of them uh, from Zagreb. Um, and then also Darko Vesic of the Center for Politics of Emancipation, Belgrade. And also Ljubljana Zverion, also workers in Banks Universities, Primoz Krasovac, and also a researcher of the Institute for Labor Studies. Now, uh, as we uh, mentioned, the topic will be building a new lab in the Balkans. So I hope this will be a lively discussion. Uh, more so than the previous panels, it will be one uh, in which we would like a lot of participation of the public. Definitely I see a lot of people who would also deserve a right to be here, so your contributions will be much appreciated. Uh, but we will begin with uh, uh, the five of us, uh, the five of uh, the people here. I would like to begin actually with uh, Boris Kanzleiter. Uh, with a, a small quote from an article that he has written dedicated to uh, the analysis of far-left parties within Europe. And uh, uh, the thought uh, goes like this. There is probably no other region in Europe where the past and present of the left are so severely out of sync with one another as they are in former Yugoslavia. Boris, what exactly does this refer to? refers, of course, to the uh, context we are living in at the moment and the glorious past uh, of revolution and socialism in Yugoslavia. Uh, I think we really have to be aware uh, about the uh, defeats the communist movements uh, suffered here in the region and to be, uh, to, to be uh, realistic, we have, first of all, to stress that uh, Yugoslavia was uh, really an exciting uh, socialist experiment. Uh, workers' uh, self-management, uh, also the conceptions uh, of uh, the party in many other aspects were much more progressive uh, than in other state socialist countries. Of course, not. Uh, uh, it was still a very uh, problematic system, but uh, in contrast to other Eastern European uh, socialist countries, uh, Yugoslavia was, a, was a, a progressive and positive example. And of course, the, the history of the uh, liberation war, the anti-fascist struggle, uh, the victory uh, uh, against the German occupation and the uh, uh, local uh, allies to the fascists, out of a mobilization of the masses, out of uh, practically the mobilization of own resources mainly. This is a historical, unique uh, experience uh, which is related to the history of the socialist uh, movement of Yugoslavia. So having this background of this uh, uh, experience, um, we are really today in a, in a uh, catastrophic situation. Uh, if you look at the small forces um, uh, of the left in the region, and if you look at the domination of, the, of various regionary uh, ideologies in society, and to understand this process, I think we are really we have to critically anal uh, analyze uh, the role of the uh, communist party and uh, their double, I would say, uh, self-defeat. 
first uh, in the late phase of socialism in the 70s and 80s, uh, the inability of the party to react uh, to the structural problems in society, and uh, of course also in the, uh, from the 90s until today, the inability of the, uh, the post-communist parties to react to the challenges of neoliberal capitalism. Actually, they were champions of the introduction of the market, uh, of capitalist restoration, and this is uh, leaving, out, uh, leaving us today without uh, party infrastructure, without resources, and uh, of course, uh, we have this uh, incredible big problem of legitimation. Uh, because um, we are living in the context where socialist uh, party or post-communist party practically uh, uh, turned to the other side and it's very hard to explain uh, what we are standing for, what we are fighting for uh, and I think this is uh, the biggest challenge uh, at the moment. Also these uh, post-communist parties uh, have actually renamed themselves usually to conservatives, liberals, or social democrats. That doesn't make much difference in a couple of ways to pick uh, uh, most important questions, though, does it? Um, now, uh, uh, one key element in this uh, uh, transitional phase is also a very uncritical uh, acceptance of everything Western and everything associated with capitalism, such as we know in Europe in the past decades. Um, uh, this uh, non-critical political vacuum uh, has uh, some reasons behind them. And I think uh, two are important to stress. One of them would be, for instance, the role of NGOs. Pretty much, perhaps, uh, you're not. You're one of those people who uh, doesn't like NGOs too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I mean, any, any, any person with a minimum of critical reflection doesn't like NGOs. But I, I, I still think they, uh, it's actually quite easy to, to, to hate NGOs, but still we have to take into account um, when developing a dismissive, uh, which is of course correct attitude towards NGOs, so have to take into account they have an important uh, social uh, uh, function in a very uh, prosaic sense. They, they provide employment for all the young and, uh, uh, I mean employment in, in quotation marks. They provide some, uh, some means of, of monetary means of survival for all those highly educated people come out of universities and are then uh, permanently unemployed, so they, they fulfill this uh, um, very vulgarly, sociologically speaking, they fulfill this uh, social role, they fill this social vacuum that once extended public, uh, public sector covered, um, and now uh, with the contraction of the, of the public services, now uh, there is no employment uh, uh, and also with the retrieval of the state from a certain uh, public services, NGOs jump in uh, uh, to fill this role, which I think, and here we come to the uh, problematic part, which was uh, uh, some public, public functions or public services that were once, however, uh, however imperfectly done by, uh, by state institutions, however bureaucratic they were, however alienated from the real needs of real human beings, they still had a minimum of democratic uh, accountability. Uh, while now the, these same public services, previously, uh, previously uh, organized by the state and now being carried out by the non-governmental uh, organizations, um, are basically organized uh, and accountable, organized by and accountable to uh, some shady private donors, uh, um, probably living in some, in some tax haven. So you, you don't really have anybody to complain and you don't have any, any, uh, any instance of, for example, any of democratic influence from below on how, how they work because they, they only communicate to their top, to their, they are only responsible to their private donors. So when you come to a situation when important, but this is maybe not so much the case in Slovenia, but generally if you take a look at Africa, Latin America, uh, Caribbean and the regions like that, you can like whole health service, uh, uh, big parts of education carried out by the NGOs and not being subjected to any kind of uh, democratic accountability. I think this is the main problem. Thank you. Um, now the, the other point I think is important to stress in this uh, initial part is uh, the question of academic uh, curriculum. Uh, Matt, possibly this question is for you. Uh, sorry, 
uh, with your microphone. Uh, what happened to the Open Academic uh, Curricula in the past uh, years? Uh, what happened to the Academic Curricula was uh, complete uh, devastation of, of uh, it was process connected with the process that was uh, described and also in a sense connected with the process that Primoz uh, is uh, describing. You know, the project of the uh, U.S. Social Revolution was completely delegitimized in the in the, in the 80s uh, uh, with the crisis and there was no any social uh, force uh, to articulate that uh, that crisis from the from the left socialist uh, uh, socialist uh, position in the same time in the academia so now of course we have to uh, first evaluate uh, the work of uh, academia and in the 70s and the 80s and how the Marxist tradition was uh, in lots of departments or already then, uh, uh, then completely, uh, completely moved, moved aside uh, uh, in, in, in a sense. So I think that this process should be located first in the 70s and the 80s and it should be connected to the, to the economic processes in, in the region and the market reforms and all that stuff. But the, in the 90s, uh, all the NGOs in a sense, like some kind of NGOs that, that can be situated in this para-academic Institutions or the privileged place for the production of of, of the knowledge of, of social reality, but this, this, this knowledge was deeply connected to the ideology of uh, accession to the European Union. Uh, there was also this uh, knowledge was, in a sense, also it was connected to the, to the minority rights, but these uh, minority rights and human rights were not ever uh, articulated in, in, a, in a systemic sense. That the, only this, some kind of, uh, only the articulated, only ideological framing that when we come to Europe, everything will be, uh, will be okay. And also in academic sphere, there was no production of knowledge that we could use as an instrument to uh, understand what happened in, in the 80s and the 90s, uh, to, to understand the process of the capitalist, uh, capitalist uh, restoration, and to understand the, uh, the. Uh, the, uh, the function and the role of wars in, in that in, in that process, and I think that what we miss here uh, on Balkans, especially, is the, is, the, is a proper research and proper uh, uh, theoretical investigation and historical of the uh, wars and of the process of uh, disintegration in Yugoslavia. We don't have uh, we don't have a clear uh, perspective on the left and historical investigation and theoretical few books or anything. Uh, like that, that would explain the war from the from the Marxist uh, Marxist uh, perspective. And I think in next few years we have to uh, have to fill that uh, fill that gap because in all these uh, struggles, if you want it or not, uh, the question of war, the question of nationals, uh, the national question has already every time <coughs> popped up, and we don't have okay, we have a reaction to that, to that but we don't have a properly articulated. Uh, uh, position to win the hegemony in that uh, in that struggle because that, that, that those are these ideological uh, resources that are that, that are circulating and we have to uh, and we, we have to acknowledge that because we we don't have uh, uh, we don't uh, uh, choose uh, where we want to intervene because we have to intervene in, in the social conflicts and I think this in the last 20 years the knowledge production about the social conflicts and capitalist restoration. Uh, we don't have anything from that, from that period to be used as history. Okay. Well, definitely what we can say by this point is that the war has served as a catalyst. Um, and I guess the quickest way that we can uh, sum up the transition from what we heard by, by, until now is that um, there was an unknown critical acceptance of Western integrations and multiculturalism. And uh, instead of uh, uh, far left parties, we had liberal NGOs. And instead of critical theory, we had an import of Western trends. But nonetheless, to this uh, um, um, uh, brief sketch of a, a transition, there were uh, 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 attempts of political organizing throughout uh, 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 the decade. I am here uh, referring to uh, examples such as uh, anti-war and anti-NATO struggles from the late 90s. I'm referring here to the wave of uh, higher education struggles um, uh, between, say, 2009 and 2011. And I am here talking about, of course, about the uh, recent upheaval, which is symptomatic of uh, countries disappointed by uh, 
the post-Western integration period of society. And of course, this is much accentuated by uh, the crisis from 2008 onwards. Now, um, I would like here to ask all of you um, the, about these attempts of political organization in your countries, because what I think is uh, they're all, they have all been more uh, like initiatives, meaning temporary in nature and dying out in a matter of months or possibly uh, years, and there was never much continuity that should have been, uh, that is, uh, of course, necessary for a party. So uh, please, everybody uh, think about this question and uh, by all means uh, uh, stem from your own personal experience. As with the microphone closes, you begin. Yes. Um, uh, well, um, uh, 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 when we speak uh, about initiatives in Serbia, we have to uh, have in mind uh, uh, the specific uh, situation that created, uh, created by the war and uh, the, the uh, economic san sanctions. Uh, the fact is that uh, during the 90s, uh, the, the regime uh, uh, on, on, on the power then uh, uh, used the legitimation of uh, uh, socialist uh, heritage. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the opposition actually used more uh, to, 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 uh, 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 to attack them than they used it to defend, but, uh, uh, <laughs> to defend, but they never uh, uh, claimed that they were, weren't socialist. Uh, in the power it was a socialist part of uh, Serbia. Uh, this uh, produced a certain kind of uh, uh, ideological confusion that, uh, um, uh, uh, that we have a situation that only the uh, 5th October of 2000 is seen as, as the, the uh, real uh, capital restoration. And uh, uh, only from then we can speak of uh, uh, trying to, to, to uh, work through the, that kind of ideological confusion because much of the left uh, now is uh, was built then on the on the in the uh, liberal movements who were trying to, to restore the, the, the capitalism over total marginalized uh, they, they, they didn't have the the, 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 the chance to, to be to to, to in, uh, insert their discourse but were were uh, were uh, uh, they had to, to, to work through the discourse of, of liberal consensus. Uh, and uh, that's why this kind of struggles, uh, except maybe for, for the higher education struggles and, and uh, blockades of uh, faculty in 2006 and 2011, uh, and 2007 in some uh, faculties in Dobrit, uh, uh, except for this, all the other struggles, anti-war, anti-NATO, uh, are um, more, um, were tried, uh, left tried to, to uh, establish itself through these this movements, but uh, uh, Anthony uh, especially was uh, uh, a thing of the, the far right and the right because Serbia fought the war against NATO, so it couldn't be used as a formulation of the uh, left initiatives. Well, as far as the uh, or political organizing in Croatia in the 90s, it was mostly a reserve for the NGO sector and uh, they were mostly uh, involved in uh, uh, organizing protests for a concrete issue uh, within the realm of, um, of human rights activities. And uh, the main problem uh, with that was that um, they were always talking only about uh, public policies. The political was, uh, everything political was something that was reserved for parliamentary uh, parties. There was not the idea or the concept of political uh, uh, outside of the parliamentary um, uh, uh, space. So uh, the first, the first uh, um, organizing, the first political organizing that was that stepped away from that kind of uh, thinking or or, or um, uh, ideology was uh, was higher education struggles in 2009. Because it was uh, from the first uh, from the first moment on, it was it was uh, formulated as a political struggle. The, uh, at no moment there was uh, um, there was no uh, there was no uh, um, uh, focus on the on the on the law by itself, but it was always uh, portrayed as a as a broader political context. And uh, the uh, the problem with the with the uh, or political organizing or the lack of the political organizing prior to, to the late 2000s in Croatia was the
the, was the fact that um, uh, everything uh, from the, there was a big political void of 20 years for the left. There was no left. Uh, uh, everybody who was, uh, who was who were Marxists in, in a previous uh, social uh, regime were now not Marxist, and uh, there was no uh, there was no continuation of the generations. So uh, uh, we were to uh, start uh, all over again. We didn't have we didn't have uh, professors, uh, and we didn't have uh, we didn't have books to read in Croatian that were that were uh, portraying our society from the left perspective, perspective and so on. So I think that uh, when talking about uh, political organizing from now on, uh, it will be uh, one of the biggest challenges for uh, for Croatian left is to to detabuizize. Uh, Detabuization of the of the left and everything that is going on in Yugoslavia and uh, and Yugoslavia itself because there's always this because of the war and all the consequences of the war uh, there is a big uh, uh, taboo towards everything that is communist and uh, in Croatia there was this big uh, um, um, uh, strategy of uh, demonizing everything that is to do with communism and Yugoslavia and so on it was. It was equalized with Chetniks and with, uh, with Nazis. So at some point they wanted to uh, they wanted to to make it look like uh, not even anti-fascism was uh, was, uh, was um, left untouched. Even that was, uh, they even tried to to say that the partisan crimes were uh, equal to Nazi crimes. So I think this is something that we have to bear in mind. In terms, of, you mentioned the, uh, the problem of continuity. Now, the uh, student movement was very influential and very well organized in uh, Croatia. It was certainly a uh, very fine example for us who uh, began our activistic careers around that time. But uh, uh, with, with a student as a political subject, uh, I think there are two problems. Um, he is a he can be a political subject. Wherever he um, begins to be a political subject in September and ends being a political subject in June, and also in between their exams. And also, he is a student, and as such as a student political subject, for say four or five years. Um, how do you see this as a problem? I mean, is this a problem in terms of continuity? Possibly, I don't know, Andrea or Marco. Well, I think it is a problem, and uh, uh, it was uh, the biggest problem in our student movement uh, was that we, we didn't manage to reproduce another generation that would be involved and stay involved in the problems of higher education uh, and uh, on a political level. Uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, that the movement uh, or the activities at the faculty stopped completely, no. But uh, I think that um, part of the problem was that many people uh, who were involved in the occupation of 2009 were there because it was, uh, it was an event and it was something uh, fun to do and uh, their motivations for being involved in that weren't political. And uh, uh, from the first moment on that uh, when the, the occupation started to lose its uh, power, um, uh, it started to the, um, started to dissolve. So, and um, um, the most important uh, things uh, that uh, the, okay, the student occupation in Croatia was really important uh, on a broader social scale. The most, uh, uh, there are two more, more the most important uh, things that uh, developed from the occupation. One is the, the, the co uh, connection with the media. We have a great um, um, inflow in media space in Croatia. We can get to uh, to all kinds of media,s and uh, the, we, we we have the, the channel to get our voices heard. It's just that uh, we have a leg um, legitimation problem. Is that in order to uh, we're talking about this last night? In order to to to, uh, to be uh, uh, considered a political subject, we always have to create an event. So this is kind of a problem. And the other thing that is very important about student occupation in Croatia is the, the union uh, that was created. It, it's called Academic Solidarity Union, and it's a union that was created by students and professors together. And uh, um, after the occupation, uh, uh, the, the professors who were supporting the, the, stu the student movement, they are the ones who actually continued to, to, to fight against the commercialization of education and so on. So, 
uh, um, um, while there was a problem with, uh, with um, uh, creating new generations of young people to continue and to, to follow the same, uh, the same uh, uh, not rules, but uh, ideas and concepts and, and so on. Uh, in that part, the student occupation, the student, student movement, movement in Croatia had failed, but it had succeeded in these two other ways that I'm talking about, the media and the, and the evidence of that. Well, uh, I don't want to talk a lot about the, uh, the past and, and the student movement because we are not talking about building a, a new lab as a team of the panel, but just to add one, uh, one thing why this, part of this structure problem that you mentioned in your, uh, in your question are, are crucial and I think there wasn't, I think it almost it wasn't possible to maintain this, the same intensity of movement through the, through, through the years because of the structural reasons, structural reasons of introduction of students and also the reason of the uh, oil of the left in the last 30 years. But I think the crucial one of the reasons that most people that were politicized in these occupations and that, that, that continued to, 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 to be activists or theorists or, or, or whatever, uh, they lose their uh, motivation to, to stick to this narrow field of uh, education education policies and to stick and to make to work on the mobilization and education of, of younger students and they went to, to, to the other teams to the broader social uh, uh, social problems because because the because they were deeply criticized in that in, in, in that moment and they they just uh, leave, leave this space of education not all of them but lots of them leave this space to another generation that was this also aspect of the problem of this lack of continuation. To add something, um, the, the form of continuity is, uh, uh, can very good be seen in Serbian situation. We have uh, blockades of uh, occupation of, uh, uh, of uh, philosophy faculty in 2006 and 2011, uh, but uh, not many persons who were involved in 2006 were also involved in 2011. In, uh, uh, although there was uh, some initiatives uh, who tried to, to, to work on the student uh, issue all, all, all these all this, that years, uh, there has never been um, enough visibility of, of uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, actions. Uh, I think that, uh, we can't uh, expect the continuity without uh, institutional, institutionalization of, of the left. Uh, uh, when you have uh, uh, institutionalized uh, um, left organizations, um, party, parties or something, you can expect that, that, that you can expect that uh, uh, students uh, who are involved in the struggles uh, during the, 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 their education can then find uh, 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 some uh, um, way to, to uh, 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 continue to be politicized and uh, like Marco said, they can find a way to, to uh, work on broader uh, uh, problems in society. But uh, 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 with uh, the, the lack of that institution, institution uh, uh, there is, a, uh, there is a, a problem how to, to transfer the ideas and, and, and everything uh, uh, through the, the, the uh, student body. Um, yeah, Boris? Maybe I can comment uh, uh, this part a little bit from our perspective as a foundation. <laughs> Stiftung, it's not... Um, so. Um, our organizations lead to the left party in Germany and for that reason we have uh, quite um, uh, uh, good possibilities of uh, financing um, uh, left initiatives in the region and uh, what we can say from our experiences is that it's a, it's a real challenge, it's a real problem because uh, Primoz already mentioned uh, the problem of NGOization uh, on the one hand on the other hand, now Darko said, uh, institutionalization is necessary. This is exactly, I think, the problem. Uh, or actually, it's not a problem, it's a challenge. We have to be aware of this problem. I also think, uh, exactly as Darko pointed out, that to provide con continuity uh, in our political activism, we need resources, we need media, we need organization. We need also access uh, to other institutions, to academic institutions. We need to be assistants, if not professors, uh, at the uh, university. Um, 
and uh, we need to occupy also space uh, in, uh, in, 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 let's say, mainstream media in a way. Uh, we, we have to use all these resources. So, uh, this is necessary if we want to come out of this little ghetto uh, which we are in. It's a very beautiful one. Uh, uh, but uh, it's, of course, in a political uh, sense, uh, not enough. I think we were very successful in the last years to produce a critical discourse on many different issues, mainly on the issue of Euro crisis transition. There are also black holes, a little bit like uh, the Marxist uh, analysis of the breakup of Yugoslavia and other topics. But generally, I think in the uh, in the production of a, of a socialist Marxist based discourse in many fields, we can be really satisfied with the with, with the work of the last years. But we are not able until now to build, uh, or only partly, uh, uh, to build bridges uh, from, from, our, uh, from, from, uh, from uh, our activism and, and intellectual production into societies. And this is the question then of resources, where, where we can find them. I think this is the challenge for the, for the next period. Uh, uh, our comrades from Slovenia started uh, with, the, with organizing something like a political actor um, more than an activist group, uh, less than a party, but um, a political actor. I think this is one of the steps which should be taken uh, in the whole region, but there are also, of course, other steps to be taken. Yeah. Yeah. I would also like to add a couple of words on, on the student uh, movement um, and the student movements in, in the region, uh, let's say, uh, post Yugoslav countries. Um, well, from in the retrospective, uh, they, they were limited. They, they were objectively limited they, uh, to, to a certain, to certain uh, groups of population, uh, to certain problematic which wasn't properly universally political and so on. But still, I think they are significant in some other uh, uh, aspect that wasn't mentioned so far, in, in, in as much as they were the first um, political or activist or leftist uh, series of, uh, say, student uprising that were truly internationalistic in, in, in character. So they were part of a, of a European, at least continental, if not global, wave of student uprising in, in recent, let's say, five years, five or six, six years. Um, but they weren't, uh, they weren't uh, automatically, they, they were still, in, in a sense, they, they were uh, uh, genuinely local, so they, they stem from the analysis of the, of the uh, local situation uh, of, of its reflection. They, they drew on some organizational and personal resources and so on, so they weren't, um, they presented a, a kind of a breakthrough in the sense that previously, let's say in the, in the late 90s, with the, with the anti-globalist uh, trends coming uh, to the region, uh, they, they presented this rebirth of activism in the late 90s, early 2000s, presented an auto automatic me mechanical transmission of some models uh, developed elsewhere in a local context where they were uh, quite uh, quite foreign and alien and never. And I think this this was maybe one of the reasons why the, the previous cycle of studies after this uh, uh, political vacuum in Amnesia in the 90s, well, why they never really took off. I think I'll just give one very symptomatic example. For example, in the in the, this big cycle of political mobilization, left wing, uh, left wing uh, politics, and so on, from 99 to 2003 in Slovenia, there was a huge mobilization against Slovenia Centre into NATO. But there was hardly any criticism of Slovenia Centre. To European Union at the same time. So, but now uh, we can see 10 years later that the European Union is hugely, immensely bigger problem now. Uh, NATO is completely insignific insignificant except for the high, uh, high participation uh, fee that you have to. But compared to the uh, problems brought on the European Union, it's insignificant but still in, in debt. And I think the reason why uh, the this discrepancy was precisely because it was an, uh, was an automatically imported, globalized, standardized, anti-globalist uh, model of activism without any proper reflection or taking into account of local context, uh, local resources, uh, local sources. And I think the student movements 
in, in most, if not all of these countries, presented a break with this um, automatic importance of a standardized global leftist subculture and, and presented a way of organizing, and th this is crucial, presented the first attempts of organizing something that actually uh, 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 takes takes into account uh, local local specificities, local context, but it's still genuine inter, inter, uh, internationalistic in character. So it's not just this global spread of standardized commodif commodified lefty subcultures, but it really at least potentially is uh, politically subversive. Okay, let's, uh, let's stay with the student movements for a while, uh, just a while more. Um, well, but uh, there is still this problem of continuity. I mentioned that uh, with the limited amount of uh, activists, with them uh, uh, moving to broader topics uh, instead of just uh, education struggles, and what uh, Andrea agrees, uh, uh, this problem, the specific problem of students in terms of continuity, uh, um, this is a problem. And I would like to compare it uh, uh, with uh, Slovenia. Um, despite being a bit less organized, has there been a bit more continuity if you agree or not? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and also why? Uh, yeah, that's, um, that's a, I mean, I don't, I don't know a Croatian example is so intimately to, to, to be able uh, uh, to compare it, but I think um, there are uh, maybe one, one of the main points in, in uh, at the beginning of the new students movement in, in Slovenia in 2007 with the with the struggle against the, the, the legislation that will bring tuition fee to, to Slovenia's universities, but also a support of, of trade unions. And I think this, this was important uh, because the trade unions abandoned the, the students in Zagreb or betrayed uh, students in Zagreb. So I think this, this was uh, one of the, um, maybe, maybe one of the, the factors. And uh, the other is that still, uh, without any, uh, uh, without any uh, redundant vanity, uh, we could say that uh, um, leftist intellectual theoretical infrastructure is much better developed in Ljubljana uh, comparatively. Um, so, so there, there were some channels uh, that allowed for the, for the reproduction of, of the continuity of the movement. Although you can say with, and it is true that student movement is, is very limited in its uh, political scope and uh, um, its, its political power or influence, but still it, it could be continued just because it has some, uh, has some nuclei or some organizations where you could uh, fall back to when this whole rush of the faculty occupation or a, a mass protest subsided. So you had some space to return to, to develop, to, to reflect while I think on the other hand, that is, to my knowledge, this, this was absent. Okay, um, <clears throat> Okay. One, one thing, we're 40 minutes into the round table and I think, uh, as promised, I uh, would like some uh, uh, public uh, participation in this debate, so I would like to open the microphone and anytime you feel like uh, 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 raising questions or commenting or adding something, just raise your hand and you will receive the microphone. Thank you. Uh, any questions until now? Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, now this uh, uh, question of institutionalization has been uh, uh, raised a couple of times until now. Um, as uh, Boris mentioned, uh, positions, uh, public spaces, uh, and also finance. Or actually, as Marco said yesterday, uh, you need money, basically. Um, <clears throat> and also the, the, the other topic I think that was uh, brought up until now is how with the uh, uh, these kinds of uh, uh, continual institutionalized functioning, how do you, how do you draw uh, public attention? Uh, any, any, I think uh, uh, we should uh, uh, go into this topic a bit uh, at the point. Uh, perhaps uh, one other um, uh, uh, initiative that was present in the past years was the uh, anti-EU campaign in Croatia. Uh, I would like to hear some thoughts on this particularly in the uh, sense of uh, media attention. <coughs> so uh, that, that campaign uh, uh, before the referendum on Croatian accession to the EU wasn't 
a big movement kind of thing, but it was some kind of campaign that 10 or 15 hours were doing it. It was based on publishing some texts and uh, uh, being involved in discussions in, on TV or other media or giving some uh, interviews. But our main, uh, main uh, goal was to articulate the left, left critique uh, of, the, of the European Union, not to let to, it to, uh, to, to write right to the fascists to recognize this anti-EU uh, position. And we have really uh, unexpectedly uh, broad impact on, on, on in the discussions and in the, in the, in the mainstream. But uh, just one thing that I want to, to, to put out to what we have learned maybe from this, uh, this campaign, that we were in this really spe specific position. We are criticizing, criticizing EU. We were against, uh, at, the, at the principal level, against of the creation uh, accession to uh, to EU, EU. But on the other hand, you know, there was 15 of us. We, we couldn't uh, articulate a plausible alternative, not not in a theoretical sense, but in a political sense, because we didn't have any kind of political power, power or, or social relevance of that sense. And you you have this kind of uh, really contradiction in, in terms of. Uh, that I was talking about yesterday about your uh, political coherence in, some, in terms of program, in terms of critique of the, of the institutions, of the uh, imperialist e EU policies, about the opposition prioritization of the country, but you don't have any kind of, of uh, clear political program. You cannot, you don't have any kind of uh, social uh, social uh, power, uh, social power to make that uh, program. Uh, uh, politically, uh, politically possible, and I think that, that this, is the, this is the problem not only with this, this kind of initiative in, in campaigns, that, that will also be a problem with, the, with this more institutionalized, uh, institutionalized uh, uh, is it organ organizations, uh, because you know there is more. Most of us that we are not somehow belonging to this new uh, Balkan left, there are also in every country maybe just. 20, 30, or 50 uh, young free, freelancers working in, in, different, in different fields. Our position in the process of production is, is completely uh, irrelevant. We have to have that in mind, of mind all the time when we are uh, taking our social and political position, when we are, when we are making a uh, coalition, because we don't have any kind of uh, power like we had maybe in student community to block the process of academic production. But but we are now completely out of the process of production and we have addressed that we are only in position to, to, to somehow spectacularize, uh, to, to provoke some events, uh, to, to get some uh, uh, social, uh, public and media attention. And I think that the crucial thing in, from that perspective to, is to establish and work on our own, on our own media and our own ways of uh, our media infrastructure and the ways to communicate and transfer our ideas. Uh, may, may this be another opportunity to ask if there is any thoughts from the public? Yes, Christina. Hello, my name is Christina Bozic. I'm wondering whether there are any concrete examples or practices that you have developed, either in terms of media or in terms of cooperatives that have been mentioned in the media sphere, but also just in production or in, we, we've heard about um, ship, well, workers taking over the shipyard, there has been Rearticulatia, which was published in all the Balkans languages, I think it focused more on the colonization um, idea, and I'm wondering whether you see any practices on the ground that put the left ideas and critique um, uh, in real life and what has been the reflection of these practices and experiences learned or lessons learned? Well, I think this is something that Croatia does uh, be uh, better and better uh, constantly. Uh, uh, we've somehow managed to we've somehow managed to use the, the NGOs in a in the best way that we could given the circumstances. And this is to, to form our own NGOs or cooperatives and to politicize our activity through that. So this is one of the... Uh, we actually used the, uh, the instrument of the NGOs to, to politicize and to institutionalize our uh, work. 
So in that uh, in that context, there is this one NGO. It's called Breed uh, that does a lot of work with the unions and with the workers. So uh, I think this is something that uh, that is uh, that is really pro progressive uh, and that is uh, and that is um, uh, uh, happening in the. Uh, it's, it's growing, it's better and better constantly. Uh, for uh, today, there is a, there is a big uh, workers' protest uh, that were, that were um, organized by, by the unions, but uh, there were union meetings with, together with our activists. Uh, some of the people here uh, who are from Croatia have been participating in those uh, uh, meetings. And there was this uh, um, political uh, approach to formulating the demands of the protest. And this will be a really huge protest for Croatia. They said like 20,000 people they're expected because unions have uh, paid for the buses and uh, paid for the people to come to Zagreb and to protest. So there, there, there are a couple of, um, um, uh, of uh, advantages of uh, the way uh, Croatia, people in Croatia and us who have um, developed from the students' movement uh, the way we're doing things now. And uh, for example, the we, um, We've taken over. We've taken over the young anti-fascists. Uh, our friends have, and uh, they will now. Uh, uh, they are now entering the the, the institution institution called Saba, which is a partisan institution that only um, survived because uh, the ex-president of Croatia, Stepan Mesic, was feeding a lot of money into it. So now some of our friends are are will be a part of that uh, of their uh, of their board. And uh, this is important because they have a building. So, uh, and <laughs> it is important because uh, uh, next to that building is uh, is uh, is some uh, a Croatia veterans building. And if uh, and if we don't take over that building, then they will. It would be a disaster. But uh, as far as uh, other things are concerned, I think that uh, Brit is doing a great job with connecting uh, our political uh, standpoints with, uh, with the workers uh, on the ground. So in that context, uh, when compared to, uh, to a situation about a year ago, we now have by further um, uh, a better influence on the workers, we have better connections, and there are some, uh, some uh, platforms and there are some uh, projects that are being done between our activists and, uh, and the workers. So I think this is maybe uh, the one thing that I would point out that Croatia does really, really good. And uh, we, uh, for example, in Serbia, there's a problem of, uh, of, uh, um, of coordination and, uh, and um, working together with other group groupings that are not uh, um, ideologically uh, completely 100% of the same side. And uh, in Croatia, we never had that problem. Well, we were always, um, we were always able to work with, uh, with the liberals, with the NGOs, and even when we did anti-NATO, it was in 2007, and it was before, before two years before the uh, for, uh, before occupation. So it is really difficult to say we, the new left, but there are some people or a lot of people who did anti-NATO that are now uh, uh, active, active in all these uh, 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 organizations that I've been uh, talking about. Uh, even then, we worked with FIDRA, which is the Croatian Veterans uh, Organization, and uh, because they had the infra infrastructure to organize collecting uh, the signatures for the uh, for the referendum that we were trying to to, to bring about. So um, I think that these are a couple of things that are uh, compared to the advantages of Croatia uh, within the region. And uh, I'm talking about uh, building a new left in the Balkans. I think that maybe one of the most important things to say is that what someone said, I think Rox said that yesterday at the conference of uh, presenting the, uh, uh, the IDS, is that uh, we have to work internationally. So I don't think that people in Serbia and organizations in Serbia can solve their problems with uh, non, -co uh, with non -co uh, cooperating with each other without us because it's been going on for too long. And I think that maybe some of the uh, things we have in Croatia, like the lack of the continuity, uh, of producing new cater and new people, uh, I think maybe uh, people from Slovenia can help us to deal with that. And I think that um, 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 maybe Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung plays a, a big role because it is enabling us uh, many types of consultations such as this conference. And 
we, I think uh, this is a good thing and I think we should have even more this kind of consultations uh, uh, between, these, uh, between these countries. Thank uh, you, Boris. I think you have been slightly called upon here um, on the topic of fragmentation. Please do not talk about Kronstadt. <laughs> said uh, the situation in Serbia is or has been uh, uh, like that uh, for, for too long for now and uh, uh, most of uh, uh, um, uh, protests and, and, and uh, uh, trying to, to do uh, uh, activists in Serbia were kind of organic, uh, uh, organically uh, uh, drawn out of the problems but they never were uh, uh, enough worked on. Uh, uh, so um, the experience uh, from, from the, this west side of the <laughs> Balkans really does mean a lot to us. Uh, only then, we, uh, only now we can start uh, uh, raising the level of, of uh, what we are doing. Uh, uh, not only, uh, I don't know, go to the street and say, yeah, we are anti-capitalist, but what does that mean to, to, to somebody? Uh, we need uh, more concrete analysis uh, that we can build on and uh, we are just now learning how to do that. Okay, um, well, let's connect this to the question of the media um, that was brought up beforehand. Um, and for, until now, I think in all the countries, we're still implementing the tactic of um, um, jumping and attempting to reappropriate re a, uh, a media event, such as accession into the EU or an economic crisis and so forth. But uh, I'm interested in your thoughts on um, how to move from this tactic to creating your own event, which is something I think we all agree is that you uh, need a political base in order to do so. So uh, uh, how, to, how to go from these uh, groups of 30 or so freelancers, either cooperating such as in Croatia or not even that, such as in uh, uh, Serbia, towards uh, uh, broader groups, both in number and in uh, 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 bridging different social strata, generations and so forth. I'm interested in your thoughts, what is needed in order to um, start making such events, protests, or anything else? Well, in, in a world, what is needed is class consciousness. Um, and, uh, but I will mean, <laughs> elaborate it a bit. And it's uh, one of these things that is, uh, it sounds uh, nice and it's uh, easier said than done, but actually, um, uh, when just, I mean, it's obvious that this is what is needed, among other things, but uh, it doesn't tell you, I mean, it doesn't absolve you the responsibility to think of uh, concrete steps to, uh, together. So uh, maybe, maybe I will start just with the sketch and then I will pass on and maybe come back to that. With the sketch on uh, why, I, um, uh, uh, why I think the, the class consciousness is, uh, is retarded in its development or why it is uh, fragmented or it's not really class consciousness at all. Something, I mean, we mentioned all of the elements that are reason for this state already. One is the purchase of Marxism or any critical theory from the uh, university curricula in the 90s. Uh, then there is also the, the generation of, uh, of the whole public sphere, not just the university or intellectual sphere, uh, sphere uh, but also uh, the media, uh, the newspapers, the television, uh, the increasing importance of, of television and visual communication in, um, and lessening of the importance of written communication, sensationalism, uh, tabloidization, and so on. So, so you have this, uh, throughout the 90s, you have this uh, regression of the, of the whole public sphere of, and uh, sphere of uh, social, social communication. So where, and then when new, um, new leftist contents or new leftist, even if you limit ourselves for now uh, to media contents where they try to emerge or assert themselves, they do it in, in an already commodified bite-sized form. So this is the, this is the problem that you get. Uh, instead of, uh, instead of Kittrich and Kardel and, uh, um, and Marx's capital, you get Naomi Klein. I mean, uh, this is this is the this is just to illustrate the sheer uh, the sheer degradation of the of the intellectual field, and then you have to have to build upwards again uh, from this pop journalism superficial treatment to get to get any any kind of uh, serious uh, serious 
critical, uh, social, and political, uh, political uh, reflection. And so I think in, in this situation, where, you, where the only source you can draw upon, uh, or the only source that is immediately available and not hard to find are this, this commodified, superficial, quasi-left-wing uh, text and media contents, then instead of a class consciousness, you, you have um, basically developed solidarity with victims. So this is, Naomi, Klein is, uh, Naomi Klein is a good example because in her account, capitalism is something that happens elsewhere. So this is a huge, huge step back from, let's say, classical Marxian analysis. And then you have this left liberal, or how to call it, uh, or quasi-left position, where capitalism is something that happens in sweatshops in, in Bangladesh. I mean, um, I don't deny that it also happens there, but um, you, you lose sight with, with this focus, you lose sight on the, on the, uh, the, the, the problematicness of the, the capitalist relation uh, as such, which, uh, which was something that was done on this, uh, there were translations done by all the Marxist literature, and then it was purged and, and forgotten. And uh, then you had solidarity with victims, which I think is symptomatic. Then you had the period of, of anti-war protests, because war has, I mean, I'm not implying that anti-war protests are unneeded or uh, wrong in any way, the opposite, of course. But uh, it's symptomatic in this sense of retarded class consciousness, in the sense that war has a visible victims, so you can sympathize, and it's also something that happens uh, uh, elsewhere. Uh, while on the other hand, you, with development of this type of, of politics, single issue politics, you actually actively repress the, the, uh, the development of, of class consciousness, where solidarity with victims uh, would be replaced by this more organic, so, so to speak, solidarity, where you, where you problematize the, the, the capital relation itself. Uh, just to add a little bit on, on, on the Premier's uh, intervention, I think that, uh, that's crucial also for the perspective of uh, what are now the main uh, the main battles, the, the main battles, the main entry points of, of the left uh, uh, now in concerning the, the real social uh, struggles. I think we can, especially in Croatia, identify two ways of dealing with, with uh, the capitalist uh, uh, reality. One is based on fight for commons, like there was a huge advantage moment also in Croatia in 2008 and 2009 that also had to be mentioned and all this fight uh, for commons in one way and the other way this fight for the workers uh, workers rights but it's it's fight from the perspective that somehow treat workers all in um, an identitarian uh, sense not producing any, any kind of theoretical framing uh, that would that would explain their uh, their, their position I, but I think that's not uh, something to, to judge from the uh, to criticize, but because the, there are the, those are the only options of your en entrance into the, the, the political field. Of course, of course, you can criticize it that you can have also the theoretical and theological background that, that understands these processes in a broader historical uh, historical uh, level. But you know, like uh, and I, I don't remember who said uh, two days ago, you cannot fight the interest rates you know, because you think that there is problem with the monetary policy or something. Uh, like that, but these are a, a, a good entrance points to 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 go into the, to the real social uh, uh, social struggles because there are uh, no, no privatizations going on and, and uh, austerity measures and the workers being uh, being harshly uh, attacked. But you know, from the, this spe spe uh, specificity of this uh, political uh, political uh, struggles, there's problem that you cannot from there. Uh, Pull out some kind of the theoretical frame that this also we are also in this time. This uh, then you know you cannot uh, you you cannot somehow connect this uh, theoretical of this uh, stuff that the Primus was talking about. It, it's hard to connect it to the real uh, to the real struggles because of the all these problems that you have mentioned in the first first part of the, of the round. Table. Okay, uh, I think Boris also would like to add something, and also I would like to ask if there are any more uh, uh, thoughts from the public later on. Okay, uh, maybe just a comment on the, on the media. Uh, I agree, of course, uh, 
that the mainstream media is uh, really uh, very low quality and, uh, and uh, uh, hardly really idiotic. Um, on the other hand, uh, the, I think the experiences are showing that we are able to penetrate the media, uh, uh, the media, also the mainstream media, even the, the state uh, public media and also private media, because they don't have so much to report. Um, and because uh, I think we can say that there's a really a crisis of um, of representation, of political representation in all of the societies of the region. This is shown by the protest movements, not only in Slovenia, but also in Bulgaria. So, uh, in a way, also the private and state media have to react on the obvious, uh, on the obvious social, economic and political problems in the region. Uh, and the, the established political actors, they don't offer any solutions, any alternatives. Everything is already heard. So we, we, we hear uh, for many years the liberal rhetorics about uh, European Union solving all the problems of the region and now we see a, a, a drastic political and economical crisis in Slovenia which happened to be the, the, uh, the example for a successful transition country. Of course this is creating disturbing, uh, disturbances in Serbia which is trying to get this ticket into the European Union seeing that a country which is much more advanced in, uh, in the uh, uh, transitional sense uh, is in crisis now, although they have the Euro and they are a part of the European Union. So, and, and also Bulgaria is a European Union country and we have an enormous uh, uh, economic, social and political crisis there. So these are so obvious problems uh, connected with the recession of 2008 and the Euro crisis and the structural problems of the region that they cannot be ignored by media. Uh, and uh, I think in, in this context we are really able, also uh, with not many own resources, just with uh, intelligent uh, analysis of the problems and the articulation of the problems um, uh, from the, from the left-wing uh, point of view to penetrate the media because uh, in Western Europe, in many other countries of the, the southern periphery of Europe, the anti-capitalist movement have a political significance in Greece, uh, in Spain, in Portugal. So if we articulate the problems here in the region pointing at the example of these movements, although we are really small and don't have uh, lots of resources, we are uh, seen as part of something much bigger and much more politically relevant. And I think the, the praxis in, in many of the countries is showing that it's possible to, uh, uh, with a, with a left wing discourse, also to, to enter to the mainstream uh, in this way. Okay, um, any more thoughts for the public? If not, I believe Andrea has something to add. Yes. Um, sorry, I'm coming pretty much from the outside, from Berlin, and I'm reporting on what's going on in Slovenia. And I just wonder, maybe it's really needed to look backwards where the left stands and where the left uh, in, in the Balkans has come to really hard times because of discrimination of everything that is communist, etc. But, sorry, I mean, I came here and uh, it's not so long time ago, 50,000 people were on the streets. And I came here in the country where now the fairy tale of uh, successful transition is over. And uh, so I thought here on the table, uh, for me, sorry to say this a bit provocative, but it's like a central committee uh, arguing about uh, what the left is and what it is not. But outside of these, uh, this room, we have uh, a whole country uprising, even if now it looks it's a bit coming down. But there is a kind of historical momentum which I feel is really worth to be discussed here if we are talking about. Uh, future left uh, in Slovenia and the Balkans, so I'm missing that, I must say. Okay, we, any more questions? We can collect them and then reply. Uh, and just, yes, this provoked me a bit. Uh, I, I just want to comment. Uh, uh, as uh, Jursova Hughes said in Belgrade, 
maybe two weeks ago about the protests in, in London, uh, it is important to, to acknowledge the dynamic of the protests rising in the, uh, in the last two or three years around the world and the, the fact that as we've seen with Occupy and we've seen with London protests, uh, as much as uh, it was for all of us positive and, uh, and very uh, uh, good that we had people on the streets revolting, we also saw the, the, the limits very uh, also uh, in, in, in a way maybe uh, with similar intens intensity we, seen, we have seen the limits of, of this kind of uh, uh, political uprisings. We, we have seen the uh, limits of the articulation uh, 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 in, in these protests and I think here uh, the crucial question is not, uh, not uh, or the crucial thing is not to be uh, uh, uncritically positive about all this and say okay we, we now have something and, uh, and uh, I don't know we, we should all go in the streets and join it and everything like that but, but to think uh, why uh, these limits are so structural and uh, what do we need to change so that they are transcendent because uh, the, 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 I think uh, if the things are left as they are now uh, with these kinds of protests they could go on forever repeating uh, the same mistakes and not gaining anything at all uh, I think this danger is really present and existing and for us it is, it is maybe the biggest question how to how not to let it repeat how not to let it stay the same um, I, I completely agree uh, with you Sasha I think this is, this is also one of the problems and, and I purposely won't be positive in any um, not even for a, for a moment I think I think this is the, the basic problem of the new new left um, is that is activist and I mean activists in this sub subcultural sense when you lose yourself in a in a county in the heads of your protests and you claim it as a success. Although you are nowhere near socialism or toppling the capital derivation or achieving anything at all, but you just count heads on the protests and you say on the last protest we had 200 people, now we have 500 people. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't bring you, it doesn't matter uh, unless you are self absorbed. Uh, this, uh, like Werner Bonnefeld said, this type of, uh, of, uh, of uh, foolish leftist who uh, always looks on the bright side. And I completely agree with both you and him that uh, it just doesn't make any sense. And I think if, if we can draw any lessons from the recent uh, protest uh, uh, mobilization in, in Slovenia, both trade unions, which you are probably referring to, these uh, 50,000 uh, people, um, and both the, these more spontaneous eruptions in the, in the uh, last winter, um, they, they have very, very clearly shown the, 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 the severe limitation of this, this type of politics on one hand. Uh, trade unions are capable of mobilizing a couple of tens of thousands of people and bringing them to the streets, but for one day. And this is it, this, this has no continuation and it's only done to protest this or that government measure. So it's uh, defensive by definition. If government doesn't do anything bad, trade unions will not bring people on the street. So it doesn't have any protagonist, any, any proactive, any, any positive program. Uh, so you, you can just uh, count on the trade unions as, uh, as this emergency break on a, on a let's say, uh, a neoliberal train. They don't have any, any kind of positive uh, political problem that they could push and use this type of uh, mobilization for. And basically the, the limitation of the, of the protests, of this spontaneous protest form is similar, if not, if not the same. So it is, it is directed against government. It doesn't have its autonomous agenda. I mean, messes at the protests are not political subject in a, in a strict sense. I mean, they can in the heat of the moment or because they read too much of a Sierra Negri proclaim themselves as political subject, but they're not because they, they don't run things, things run them, and they, they can only protest at the manner in, in which things run them. Uh, so, and when the government is toppled, then protests stop, because protests cannot do anything more but topple, uh, change one government with another, 
and it's it's more or less the same anywhere. So I think, and I will stop here. I mean, I could go on because this was just a preamble to an urgent question of the party forum, but um, which we are running out of time and we haven't mentioned it. But this is a crucial question. Okay. Anything else over there? comment on what Primo said about NGOs. I'm an NGO person and as Primo I do not like NGOs. Um, but NGOs are a reality. They are an important sector of our fall, the social tissue. On one side. On the other side, uh, in NGOs, at least in the social field, NGOs in social field, there are some new tendencies. For instance, a tendency towards social activism, which is quite natural because when uh, People in NGOs or volunteers dealing with social problems, they see what's going on is in field, in the field with concrete persons, and they start thinking, and they start reflecting, and they start analyzing, and this is the beginning of the story. Um, and by the way, for instance, my organization, the next public event will be public uh, social activism in the NGO sector which I think is a great idea to speak about it. And uh, uh, my experience stems from Slovenia, uh, Bosnia, and Kosovo, first of all. That really, uh, there is a shift uh, in from charity, from, how did you say, uh, identification with the victims, or something like this, compassion with victims, toward uh, a more proactive, socially pro proactive attitude. And speaking about it, what is not good, what is wrong, or posing questions. Even if an NGO is, uh, has nothing to do with, with leftists, or let's say Caritas, but if it's uh, uh, emitting uh, data about the raising number of persons looking for assistance, it is a political message. However you take it, people start to think about it. So now to come to bridges, I think that um, bridges are possible towards the NGO sector and that the NGO sector is, uh, how to say, uh, a pool in which uh, ideas uh, could be developed uh, for ideas or ideas. Okay, anything else for the public? Um, and I, I think this uh, question about the current uh, protests in Slovenia, and if you like also Bulgaria, uh, they might be pursued a bit further. So um, I will ask if they are now already losing momentum, um, is there anything left out of them? Well, uh, what, what has changed uh, in the situation before this protest wave and after it, if anything? Yeah, it's the medium ones. Um, I, 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 I don't want to say nothing has changed. I mean, there's a new government, it's still... But uh, I think the, 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 one of the motives of the, of the protest was um, the cosmetic, cosmetic, uh, cosmetic makeovers of capitalism are not enough. We want a genuine uh, social uh, and political sense. I think it, it was actually proven right in a very literal sense now. Instead of Yansha, we have Yansha in high heels. So if there, if there was ever um, like a metaphor becoming, uh, uh, becoming flesh with the, with the new, new prime minister, if there was anything, uh, anytime a real, uh, a real uh, cosmetic makeover uh, of capitalism walking among us like in concrete flesh, uh, that's, that's it, that's the new the new Prime Minister, and also, also not, nothing really changed as well as public policy uh, or especially economic policy. But, uh, just a just small question. Will this launch of uh, initiative for democratic socialism, will, will it be possible to happen? Of course, course not. These protests? No, uh, I think I, it, no. Yeah, yeah, it kind of it kinda sped up things. I think, uh, I mean, I share some of uh, Primo's criticisms or to be critical of spontaneity, but at the same time, um, I, would, I would like to say that last couple of months, even though they showed structural limitations of spontaneous protests and so on, 
definitely opened up a whole series of discussions, a whole series of, let's say, contributions in uh, all kinds of newspapers, which were before, like you rightly said it, uh, descendant on the level of sensationalism, descendant on the level of, let's say, kind of pure cliches. Like, there were people that started using words democratic socialism, or people using, you know, kind of uh, 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 necessity for a revolutionary change and so on. So it's like, there's the whole kind of, um, let's say, I wouldn't call it movement, but at least like a tendency to radicalize, you know, kind of alternatives. And I think also the launch of the uh, initiative for uh, uh, social, uh, let's say, democratic socialism and some other initiatives wouldn't be possible without this, uh, without this, let's say, massive eruption. And like masses in themselves are never already political. But of course, it is on us, on us to start to articulate it. That the masses themselves won't articulate themselves just like that. So in a way, there is not like what was also said from the audience. Okay, it's enough to be now smart and say, well, there is structural limitation. Sure, there is, but it's on us to articulate it and not just like leave it as some kind of separation between the masses and the intellectuals that will then kind of vanguardly show them where is the kind of direction. No, but to go into the masses and masses come to us. So there is a very dynamic dialectical process which is not kind of you know, separated one from the other. And the other thing that I a little bit uh, missed in the discussion, Andrea mentioned it a bit, or is uh, Boris as well, a little bit, is it time also for the Balkan International? Hmm? It's like we are talking about the specifics of the student movement, about the specific struggles here and there. There is this, I think, a very strong necessity to combine some of these movements that do exist some of these uh, groups, like intellect, more theoretical groups, but also activist groups, that exist and connect them in some kind of Balkan International, which would share like a few common denominators, let's say anti-capitalism, anti-fascism, anti-nationalism, so that's like a kind of revolutionary legacy of Yugoslav context, if you want, and on the other hand, you would have a bit more positive, affirmative denominators, which like workers' self-management, workers' collective, democratic socialism. So, of course, this is, it, it sounds very attractive and so it's much more difficult to do. But at the same time, once there is certain international kind of, at least this political platform, there are all these different groups that have a certain political referent. And this is one of the structural conditions of post-socialism, that this, the referent that was there theoretically, like connected to this purge of Marxism, but on the other hand, also politically. So the referent of socialism, the referent of Yugoslavia is gone. But it's now time to reinvent it in a more international way than just talking about student movement. Okay, I agree. Yeah. I agree about the context of what you said. I just, I'm just not sure that um, that. Um, about the denominators, I'm not sure that we should. Um, well, I, I'm not sure that we should run, rush into things. I'm not, um, I don't think that we have enough time to rush into things. You know, uh, this is also the, the answer to your questions. Um, um, I think that uh, this time, because uh, because of uh, because of the things that happened in the past, and because in and at some situation there was a point where uh, uh, workers weren't willing to defend. Uh, the socialism or, or uh, self-management of Yugoslavia. I think that this is something that we have to bear in mind constantly. And um, I, I don't want to talk about a new international because it's a risk of just uh, spreading the word around and uh, uh, and doing things uh, um, around a form and uh, without content. And I think this is a problem. And this is a problem sometimes in Croatia that uh, we uh, um, we. Um, always get into this uh, uh, discussion about what about the content and what about the form of the organization. So I think this is a big problem. And uh, the way I see things, the, the consultations between uh, Croatia, Serbia and, uh, and uh, Slovenia should continue and should happen on a regular basis. And they should, uh, be, um, they should be organized in a way about, uh, uh, to deal with actual problems 
you know. So if if the actual problem of discontinuity with student movement in Croatia is still actual problem, then this is something that is supposed to be talked about and not to be not talked about because we've been talking about this for the past four years and so on. So I think this is a, this is a problem in a way to to say that um, okay so now we'll do this and we'll do that but uh, not to have the real um, inflow uh, uh, on the other sectors of the society or workers. Yes, yes. I, I think that uh, for Croatia when we organized the occupation, uh, the, the the thing that made this occupation different from all other uh, things that were happening at that time in Croatia and at the other student occupations in, in the Balkans and, and more broadly was that it was really, really well discussed. It was really, really well, well organized. And, uh, and I think that this, uh, uh, this was uh, the first entrance point to the media. We, not, we, uh, we got the media attention with our radical media strategy of no of a, of a complete depersonalization. There was no leaders, blah, 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 everything you already know. And uh, uh, all, the, uh, all the speakers were anonymous. So, and they would, we, we rotate them every day, so the media doesn't have the, the opportunity to focus their attention on one person and to, to, uh, to, to call that person a leader and then to make a, a, a tremendous pressure on that person, political and personal and so on. So uh, at that point in time, we got we got uh, the interest of the journalists, which stayed in contact with us, and they have been in contact uh, since then. And now they are those th those are the people within the media who are who are our strongest allies. So when uh, talking about the the, influ uh, the influence of uh, activists in Croatia on the Croatian media, it is precisely because we approach them as workers. We approach them as uh, uh, as a political subjects that have to change something uh, within their own working uh, conditions and the environments if they're not satisfied. This is a big, big problem because the antagonisms are really, really strong, and it is it is it is it is sensitive because you know if you if you if you antagonize too much someone from the media sector, then you get retaliation and you get it uh, with big uh, big headlines and, and so on. So, uh, um, uh, in order, so I, th I think this is the, uh, one of the approaches that, that have to be done in uh, every uh, part of society. For example, when talking to, to, to health workers, you have to, uh, um, you have to uh, uh, let them know the dangers of outsourcing the health services and so on and so on. So I don't think that the worst thing that we could do now is to is to uh, go into big protests with big revolutionary slogans, you know, and say let's go back to socialism and something like that. This will never. This is the balance. Back. It's forward. Okay, but for the people, it's back to socialism. It is uh, for us. It is forward to socialism. But the people who are not uh, uh, who are not activists, it is back to socialism. And you have to uh, before uh, before being able to do that, you have to explain what's the difference. You have to uh, you have to have to work with you. So, just quickly on the question of the Balkan International. Um, we need, of course, the Socialist uh, Balkan Federation as part of a Socialist Europe in the end. Um, uh, but uh, we have to be uh, starting from there where we are at the moment. And uh, I think the idea of um, of regional cooperation and exchange between uh, left-wing actors uh, in the different countries, this is very important. Um, and I think um, that something is also going on in this respect. In two weeks' time in Zagreb there will be a second Balkan Forum. Last year it was uh, also in May the first Balkan Forum in the context of Subversive Festival, which actually brought together uh, around 40 actors from different left-wing groups of practically all of the countries of the region to exchange on, on crucial questions. This year it will be organized in a much broader sense uh, with already pr prepared working groups on five, six uh, key questions and there will be also a, a higher participation from, uh, from people from the region. So I think this process is going on and we need to, uh, we need to dynamicize it. We need to dynamicize it because and all these little countries uh, uh, are um, the left in all the, the, the countries 
uh, we, we need each other in a way. The resources, uh, for example, let's say, uh, of, of media production in, in Croatia and Le Monde Diplomatique, uh, this is knowledge which has to be distributed in other countries uh, which speak more or less the same language like in, in Serbia and Bosnia Herzegovina and other countries. So uh, we need this kind of exchange of, of knowledge and resources and to, to learn from each other. And I think Balkan Forum is a good start, although it has, of, of course, also its limitations and problems. Okay, over there, please. Yeah, uh, I, I, uh, I agree with Primoz that actually the question of the party and the party forum is, a, is an urgent question. So, related to the last comment before Andrea uh, spoke, I'm going to pull uh, Michael Heinrich and ask what is actually this electrical relation? What does it precisely mean? Uh, because every time we speak of spontaneity, of uh, active politics, uh, somebody comes and says, you know, oh, but we need a, a dialectical uh, relationship with, with the masses. So uh, it is my question, actually, if uh, it would be good if we could see what actually does this uh, uh, that dialectical uh, relationship means, because when you uh, drop that shell, uh, you get very serious and complete questions beneath it, like uh, do we try to uh, hegemonize our position in our politics? I'm not sure that's actually uh, that's, uh, spontaneity. Uh, do we do that? Is it just enough to go to the streets and then we'll get immediately this dialectical uh, 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 relationship with the masses? Uh, so actually my question is, let's try to concretize uh, this question and not just try to find what uh, this, uh, you know, the golden mean between these two positions and say that it's a uh, dialectical. I think this kind of question should be called the kind of maneuver from now on. <laughs> Any responses? Yeah, I will continue this talk. Uh, I think it is not a question that someone is attacking protests for the plan of protests. It is more about tactics, how to articulate this struggle. Because we have constant uh, class struggle on different levels. For example, sometimes in Serbia there are workers who are cutting their fingers off. It is also a class struggle. Sometimes you have 50,000 people on the streets. But we cannot uh, idealize this protest. It is more of the tactics, how, how to articulate, how to uh, put some political uh, message in front of this uh, protest. For example, in Serbia we have some, <coughs> there is also small uh, uh, leftist groups. I think that, that, that the case in the whole region it is like 100 activists more or less in every country. Uh, so it is really mar marginalized left and uh, in Serbia it is kind of stuck between this uh, radical revolutionary uh, politics which is kind of theological stuff. We need revolution, but it does not correspond with the concrete uh, stuff on the terrain. And on the other hand, you have this manic activism, which kind of politics uh, people, and uh, you have activists overheating. So it is, and you, and you have and you have a lot of uh, uh, questions to put answers to. So uh, I, I, I would ask you. I, I think Andrea said something about tactics in Croatia, but what is going to be the tactic of IDS, for example, in which can say in this articulated class consciousness? Uh, but it, basically, it's, a, it's an attempt to link different institutions. Um, for example, like publishing houses, this is uh, uh, regards of, uh, let's say, this agit prop uh, part of our work, so, uh, work or our future plans. It's an attempt to, to gain influence uh, in certain institutions like publishing houses, newspapers, and also what workers and bankers universities do in uh, organizing discussions and uh, lectures. And not just, not just giving these institutions, uh, creating some new, let's say, uh, taking over some existing, but not just giving them uh, new lifting content, uh, content, but also taking into account how, how, the, how their existing let's say existing mainstream or pro-capitalist or liberal content is in a way conditioned or formed by its form. So also intervening in the form of organizing, organizing things differently, 
For example, I mean, you, you can see these innovations in a way in how, how the workers and banks uh, university functions. There are no exams and no titles, um, and people people are actually equal, and they learn. And this is also without any uh, surplus vanity. Uh, people, young people who can learn more than they do uh, at their respective uh, official official universities. So this is yeah. So so this is basically basically we uh, we, do, we don't have a plan which we follow. Like, like for example, we will take over this. Uh, this newspaper and then we will do this and this, we basically uh, um, making things, things up uh, um, as we go. Maybe somebody else can comment also on the initiative. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, okay, uh, if you can uh, just wait one turn in that case, thank you. Um, Uh, yeah, basically a lot of stuff that pretty much already said, but lately uh, we were already also talking about the crucial importance is that uh, socialism as a political idea establishes organic link, links with the uh, workers themselves, the working class. So uh, it seems to me that here uh, our future projects in the following months we have to concentrate on really concrete problems that workers are facing their everyday life and uh, as Primoz also said earlier in that sense also re rebuild the class consciousness of, uh, of workers uh, of us because this is a both way uh, socialization process um, and again it is something that hasn't been done in these parts for good 20 years it is a pioneer work that we all will have to, to learn to do but it is, uh, it is something that our project, our whole initiative, uh, will either succeed or fail. In this sense, yeah. Uh, okay, in that case, uh, question over there. But kind of do in in doing that, um, states oppositions or opposites that are basically we are trying to bring together. So I think in a way this is, has been going on a little bit in the discussion. That there's the organizational form on the one hand side <coughs> and the protests on the other hand side. But I think it would be. I mean, I don't know very much about um, uh, the movements and the organizational forms here in Slovenia. So. But it seems to me that the left would be an um, organic part of the support of protest movement. So I think the question might be, how can we establish like democratic leadership within this protest movement to uh, transform these forms that die out all, ever, ever, well, all three months or something like that, to come up with some more, um, uh, more during uh, forms. So maybe, for example, in, in in the US or in Spain, there has been some kind of, Occupy has been developing some kind of Occupy the Woods movement, kind of rooting themselves into neighborhoods and trying to build up everyday resistance. And I think that would be a question, is there something like that going on? And what would be the possibility to link that to an organizational form that, it, that comes up with some forms of representation on the political level as well? So I think this, putting these things on opposite sides, like protests here and institutions, the media, and the organization of forms, on the other hand, kind of um, dealings with the question that should be brought together. Yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree, and I think this was, this was my, one of the main, uh, this was also a reality check for Slovenian left, if you can use, um, I'm not really sure if you can, fully justify the, the use of this this signifier because on the on the parliamentary scene there's nothing left then you have various initiative and movements which were involved in the movement uh, the protest movement but I, I don't think i could say they were really organically a part of it maybe some some became some didn't 
um, the summer morning on at certain, certain points. This is really a reality check and also a wake-up call. And if anything, as Gallo already mentioned, at the, at the very least, it triggered this uh, this uh, cycle of reflections, and uh, which also, which from the very start involved the, the, the necessity of making these forms, not not seeing them, as you said, as opposites, but to, to, to connect them and make them permanent. So that you, that you don't have an organization or a party on one hand standing in, in this antagonistic relationship to the, to the uh, protest, but as a party, as a, some kind of institutional share that makes the energy that uh, spontaneously arrives permanent. But this is as far as, as uh, this is as far as we went. I mean, we came to this realization that's it, that the, um, the, the result at the moment. Um, so I can't I can't really do much than agree. Okay, maybe um, one more question for the public. Maybe just uh, a little comment on this protest links with initiative and protests and so on. I think this um, most of the people I see here and I know them from Slovenia are part of the protest. And also people are workers. So um, here we don't have two separate things. And according um, um, to the question from Berlin um, and to the protests, I think the protests they were going on for years. The problem of this kind of protest is that they get normalized. And as normalized, they are totally uh, impotent. Um, for real protest, you, the good example was even exactly from Berlin. They moved 50 now move, uh, Occupy movement to the building site next to Hauptbahnhof just for a time as they uh, why they don't start building. So this kind of process has also already integrated a gentrification moment inside. It's, uh, um, it has contra effect in the sense that it legitimizes government. That this is a free society where the um, uh, opposite voices can be also heard and so on. So for the real protest, we need unpredictability. And in this sense, I think after 20 years of shutting, uh, hiding uh, uh, socialism, that initiative of uh, democratic socialism is unpredict um, unpredictable and um, in, from this point of view it has a, a potential. <coughs> uh, yeah, just a, a short recapitulation of uh, everything said. Uh, um, I'm very glad to be on this media school because um, uh, this kind of Marxist conference is something that I don't know, most of us have dreamt, dreamt for a long time on the left. Uh, and uh, while, while Marx devoted his life and health uh, uh, for the theory of, of, of uh, how to understand the capital, because he knew that uh, uh, only with the theory uh, we can get the class conscious that we have spoken here. Uh, uh, without the theory, as, as Ani said, uh, 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 the working class and the movement can only get, get the trade union conscious. Uh, and uh, with this talk uh, we, that we have, uh, uh, trying to, to, to put uh, activism and, and, and uh, well, uh, um, more theory on, on what uh, uh, versus one, one another, uh, when we look the the, the people uh, through the region who are in this sort of movements and life initiatives now, they all came from activism. They, they, the most of them were student activists and that, how, that is how they uh, got their class conscience. Uh, but uh, at some point they understood that uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, pure activism isn't just enough. Uh, it, it, it isn't. It, you have to understand the situation in order to react to it. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we're uh, uh, nearing the end of this uh, round table. In the end, I would actually just like to ask uh, uh, the panelists, just a, actually just a short and very classical question, um, what is to be done?
And I just want uh, a quick answer in terms of what is the next practical step from this day onwards. From left to right, of course. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, things to be done. Concretely, I think uh, we should use this Balkan Forum in Zagreb. Uh, if people have the possibility to attend, I think it's very important. Because it's, um, it's a unique event in the sense that uh, people connect there not only from the former Yugoslavia, where there is already something of an integration of the uh, left actors, but also from other countries of the region, from uh, Romania, from Bulgaria, Albania. And I feel that this connection between the former Yugoslavia and other countries of the region uh, is, is absolutely crucial and important to understand also the dynamics, to analyze the dynamics of these protest movements and to find strategies how to intervene and uh, to understand what, what we should do in this context. For example, a comparative analysis of the protest movements in Bulgaria and Slovenia would be very productive. Um, so I think uh, this regional integration is one thing. The other thing is, of course, we have to carry on with uh, with many activities we, we are conducting in the, uh, I think theory absolutely has its place and must be developed and also analyzes. There are many topics which are absolutely not touched by a left-wing perspective until now. Uh, I, as Marco mentioned, uh, questions like nationalism, breakup of Yugoslavia, everybody is uh, kind of uh, fearful of touching this topic, of course, with a good reason, but it has to be touched at some point. Um, also, in order to provide uh, explanation to the left in, in the rest of the world um, uh, of understanding a little bit better what was going on in this region and what's going on now. Thank you. Andrea? As I said, I think we should have uh, uh, periodically uh, regular uh, international consultations, but I think there are a couple of processes that have to be done simultaneously. And uh, on one side, we have to, everybody uh, has to work with the workers in its own country, on the field. And uh, of course, the theory and the theoretical conferences have to be done, but I don't think that this uh, field work should be uh, neglected while doing so. So I think that, um, that, you, that I, don't, I think that every initiative that will be uh, closed and uh, that will uh, only be discussing um, um, uh, what what is it uh, to be done and uh, what what uh, the initiative itself should do? I think that that in the end this will not have a great a greater social impact. So I think this is the one trap that, uh, that has to be avoided, and the only way to avoid it is to to do a lot of field work, of course, based on the theoretical knowledge of the theoretical part of the initiatives. Okay, two things maybe just uh, to mention this uh, round. Uh, first thing, uh, find a way to build a sustainable infrastructure. That's <coughs> it's a really, really crucial thing. And uh, to use this infra uh, sustainable infrastructure as a resource to intervene in all these uh, discussions. And also the other thing, the, the theoretical perspective, we have to uh, set this kind of uh, writing, banking, conference, publishing that, uh, that used to uh, educate, uh, uh, educate people. We also have to find a way how to use these theoretical approaches as an instrument in a hegemonic uh, struggle for, uh, for the hegemony in, in public space. Somehow to translate all these uh, analysis that we have all we have been written and made uh, in, for, for some aspects of, the, of our uh, of the history of the capital uh, restoration here, we have to somehow find find a way how to canalize, how to instrumentalize this kind of really in political struggle with, 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 the, with the struggle for the uh, hegemony, especially with, with, with the struggle to, to take hegemony from the liberal uh, world. Well, there isn't much uh, to add to this. I, I completely agree with, with uh, everything said. Uh, uh, we uh, have to build on, on, on these connections that we have now. <coughs> I know this from the conversation that, that, that uh, how, we, how much uh, the, the situation in Croatia with the, the, the occupation of, of faculties and uh, uh, now in, in uh, Ljubljana with the uh, uh, Initiative for Democratic Socialism means. 
to, to, to the left in Serbia, and that is uh, something to, we can draw from each other. Uh, information's uh, learning, learning from each other's mistakes and, and good movements. I, I agree with Marco and Andrea. I don't, I don't have anything much to add. I said maybe as a maybe as a precaution or a warning that I fully agree that we have to uh, do a lot more, especially in Slovenia, this leftist initiative that to tend to turn into a either juggling or uh, intellectual subculture. So field work is really urgently needed just to just to break up this space and um, uh, just just to. Stop! Stop making something in a desperate hope that video will notice and actually uh, do do some uh, do, do some agitating on the terrain uh, uh, among the among the working class in a, in its broadest uh, definition. I, I would also add um, the the necessity of kind of of turning the maybe very sophisticated, very well informed. Uh, reflections, analysis in the situation. This is a very difficult task, but also an urgent one to turn them into accessible, readable, popular versions, but without vulgarizing them, so without repeating the mistakes of, of vulgar Marxism of the best. So to find some kind of some kind of very very basic and very universal points with which everyone can identify. So you don't when you're doing field work and agitate, so you don't lose yourself in this. Um, in this uh, swamp of, of experiences and identities, and to, to, to somehow to somehow get the point through that we live in a society where to, to get use values needed for your subsistence is only possible through if you're not a capitalist through wage labor, and that that it is somehow or that this state or this condition is somehow awful, and that we need socialism. <laughs> Okay, uh, we need socialism, I think is a very nice way to end this uh, roundtable discussion. Thank you all for attendance and I would like a round of applause for the participants.